what is the future of this industry and to whom or to what we can compare the future exactly i'll come to the question main wohi bolne ka koshish kiya sir but yeah i'll come to the question to the second part of it uh first is like we are uh, we are you know exporting lot of human resources to other countries yeah. as well yeah uh, i agree to that but if you see it's a need of the uh, time i would say because where you know extremely populated human population is available uh, that means that many resources available mm-hmm. so in, when that many resources are there their preferences also varies right so even though there are huge opportunities to scale up in india the people's preference also matters a lot right. sometimes they do want to go to uh, you know some abroad countries for mm-hmm. example maybe i can refer to dubai or saudi arabia yeah yeah saudi arabia i'll pick because construction is Uh, actively, actively going yeah, on yeah, there yeah, now actively yeah so if i say like many people would want to go there because they have their own reasons like you know i don't uh, I, i just wanted to get my sister married mm. i just want to you know uh, need some uh, make some money for my post graduation mm. i just want to build a home here yeah. if i stay there for 3 years or 4 years i make enough money i come down Definitely. because all this is because of the correct currency variations right uh, i can make a little extra bit of money and then i can come build my home and then i can do a job of here right. so this set of brain drain you can't do anything about it uh, you know because it's it's all their personal preferences right. whoever wants to go they mm-hmm. want to go mm-hmm. but if you ask me this brain drain is happening because of uh, you know lack of job or opportunities in the market i would definitely not accept that okay. because there are enough number of opportunities to employ everyone everyone yes oh employ everyone who is coming out of the industry okay. there are enough number of opportunities okay but here the problem is opportunities are available mm-hmm. so every opportunity is required a skill resource skill resource so is everyone coming out mm-hmm. are skilled or not is the problem here yeah so again this is a second challenge now mm-hmm. Pe- people's preference is different mm. second thing is the skill gap between the people who is coming or stepping into the industry and uh, you know sometimes i would also say people who are not able to upgrade their skills also yeah see when this we get problem, new I people think. coming into the industry mm-hmm. we also need to elevate the people who is you know at level 1 yeah. to level 2 level so when you see level 1 for example 100 people are there so only 50 people goes to level 2 balance 50 are not able to upgrade then there is also a cha- challenge mm, right so this also sometimes disappoints the candidates blame they will end up blaming the industry blaming an organization blaming the setup environment over there right sometimes it's not that right. and then they will think instead of you know doing all this here i would rather go to some foreign country i'll settle there so these people will also go there yeah and it's very hard to uh, make them realize sometimes uh, it's because of the skill upgradation gap you know mm-hmm. they are doing the same routine job sometimes for over a period of time ah, which yeah. which which they also believe sometimes like instead of doing it here i would do it in saudi arabia i just want to go to abroad so right. these people also migrates there right so of course uh, i'm saying this two three examples because going abroad working there has multiple reasons behind it hmm. and it is uh, not because of maybe to an extent it could be because like i don't have opportunities in my own location right so instead of uh, for for example if i might be some ex place hmm. and i've got a project in jaisalmer mm-hmm. or maybe in rajasthan yeah so i might think like okay instead of doing in uh, rajasthan from mm-hmm. hyderabad i have to go to rajasthan mm. i would rather go to dubai right so that could also be there so all yeah, such reasons i bolke sochega yeah all such reasons uh, you'll have multiple reasons right. so the brain drain concept uh, i don't know like how uh, it's going to work out mm-hmm. uh, I, i don't think there is a concrete Uh, reason to find why people migrate okay okay let them migrate as we have we are the you know youngest uh, uh, set of uh, resource human resource mm. in the world mm. so it's okay to migrate sometimes because right. what happens is the other flip side of it they go there they find chances to upgrade themselves there definitely they upgrade they learn new technologies new construction concepts they come with huge project experience yeah. and they end up serving our own country yeah. maybe 5 years later they come to come back to india and they start implementing what they've learned experience what they whatever they have gathered there on local country so it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's uh, a plus what, it's actually. a plus as yeah, well yeah, yeah. yeah so this is again this will always be there you cannot mm. stop it mm. uh, you cannot control it and right. it's good to be there sometimes right okay and second is what what will be the future of this industry with what we can compare uh, in the future mm-hmm. the the first part of your question yeah, yeah yeah the future of construction industry i would say see currently like everyone i, I cannot skip this because everyone is talking about ai 
yeah um ai automation yeah, yeah, digitalization yeah. everything is happening yeah, yeah exactly the future of construction industry from my personal opinion is going to be in such a way it's the back end process or uh, you know the the documentation or the pre contractual processes mm-hmm. will be streamlined digitized in a proper uh, workflow in a okay. proper flow okay so that is going to be the future because that we have already started mm. and in the construction ways mm-hmm. it's going to be partly or marginally digitized mm. for example your construction monitoring okay your construction tracking mm. uh, your construction reporting yeah that was changed yes yeah. so all this digitization has already started to shape up can you brief that digitization yeah. so for example digitization in the sense i would like to tell one thing like because there is this reels and all sometimes you can uh, frequently see in linkedin or instagrams and all like some robot doing plastering <laughs> some robot doing uh, what do you call tile cutting and laying yeah, yeah, yeah. some robot doing painting and all first of all that kind of automation i don't think it's going to happen anywhere in india for the next 50 60 years i okay, honestly okay. believe in it okay bahar hai abhi nothing nothing no it's a fake news no, it's, a, it's, it's those are all morphed videos okay, don't rest right, all that okay right, right okay. so that speed uh uh-huh. that level of speed which you see in uh, videos yes. which a robo is doing only a human can do that trust me yeah okay. no 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 so right now we don't have that advanced robo systems of course work is in progress which yeah. might take time okay okay so those are all morphed videos don't fall for that so and mm. i would like to clarify that sort of digitization is not going to happen uh, in india at least okay. for the next 50 60 years execution right. is still dependent on people mm. doing shuttering because here it is like uh, you cannot figure it out everything just by sitting in office right. because when you go to site your uh, entire uh, story will change, change yeah. depends on the condition of the Definitely. site so you might put 100 props for a shuttering right one prop would be damaged a robot cannot recognize that one right. prop is damaged exactly. it will just install it yeah, yeah. but you know if there is a dip if it's installed uh, properly or not mm-hmm. so that you still you still need a human interface to go and do that and only a human can do all that props okay right. Right. so that i'm saying that execution part is very tough to get automated so we can see this into two two three things one is this robots i would rather call that as automation mm-hmm. uh, automation mm-hmm. and second is the digitization mm. so where we can become a digital or where the digitization inside construction industry can happen is so over the period of years what we all have learned in the industry is that data in this industry is very much fragmented very much distributed okay. it's not collectively available at a single place okay for example Uh, you name any companies mm-hmm. uh, they might have done maybe few thousand uh, uh, crores projects mm. but if you see they are able to collectively get the data of all those few thousand crores project okay it's very difficult right at least you see last 5 years project data can you pull down in a single company it's very no, difficult no, no. It's because difficult. the data is too much fragmented again the challenge is it's all people dependent yeah, yeah, yeah. and somehow we have not adapted any digital uh influence or digital use into that uh, till date mm-hmm. so now what what we are doing is the process automation has already started yeah, yeah. for example if you wanted to say, uh, raise a uh, you know if you wanted to raise a simple material request okay. now most of the companies have used started to use their own erp systems or uh-huh. some sap software yes, and all yes, is yes, in yeah. place so all that process is routemated i mean routed into the automated process mm. so somewhere things are getting documented so this asset Uh, the data i'm saying this asset is what is going to help uh, all the companies which okay. i'm saying a basic example this people have started to do 10 years before itself mm-hmm. so now what is happening is the automation of the process for example uh, sitting at site mm. uh, uh, sorry sitting at office if mm. you wanted to plan a budget mm-hmm. how we can uh, progressively see the budget of the particular project mm. compared to the budget of whatever the projects i have at least done uh, in my own company okay so that sort of data gathering and automation has already started mm-hmm. this is one side yeah, yeah yeah the other side is like as i said you know your construction monitoring mm. construction tracking mm. and documentation of uh, you know streamlining the process okay. all this was earlier used to be very manual process yeah, yeah. so now all this is manual uh, now all this is converted into digital processes digital because processes. you have this vr technology lidar technology point cloud point cloud technology yeah drone, yeah, drone. so now all this is uh, taken uh, started to get you know into the construction industry right. so that is getting automated and the other side your bim and your clash detections so these are all your uh, back end uh, you know what i would call like uh, one rather than waiting to see at site which pipe is getting connected mm-hmm. or getting clashed with which network it's mm-hmm. easy to see sitting in office and to plan the networks properly yeah yeah, yeah. so this designing infrastructure is also uh, very well uh, digitized right sir. so i would say that's what i'm saying your core execution if you leave it mm-hmm. all other process digitization has already started started to take place okay 
uh, it depends on some companies with what scale they are implementing uh, with what scale they are not implementing mm-hmm. but as an industry that awareness has started to come right okay that digitization awareness has started to come right and uh, that is something which is a positive thing mm-hmm. and earlier you know like i i feel sometimes like uh, now now like civil engineers are also uh, maybe in the future i'm saying mm-hmm. civil engineers would also require basic programming knowledge when all this organization has started to autom- uh, digitize their process mm-hmm. they need someone who can mm-hmm. understand the digitalized product mm. so for that they can't bring uh, an it engineer to do the activity because these activities it's not about building software i'm right. speaking about okay. it's about what we need to do with that software mm. because that we are again building a building yeah, yeah yeah so this software is monitoring or digitizing the process of building a building yeah so that again a civil engineer has to be there or or a mechanical engineer has to be there or electrical engineer has exactly. to be there construction industry core dependent person product. they need to any core person yeah. has to be there yeah. so this process this automated process or the digitized process is also being driven by a uh, construction, construction. Uh, professional yeah. so they need to develop a basic understanding of how this system works works yeah because only these people can suggest how this system can work effectively or more e- efficiently okay we have automated a a simple single process within mm-hmm. an entire workflow mm-hmm. now this can also be bubbled up to another process mm-hmm. so so that this workload becomes very less okay. so this set of genuine understanding can be developed only by a core professional who is using that software right so for that you need to start develop uh, you know whoever is in the industry need mm-hmm. to start develop uh, their own understanding or need to evolve their own understanding about how this digitalization works right See, again the expectation is nobody wants you to sit and do a coding exactly but they need you to understand okay how this can help or what are the ways we can take better leverage out of these digitalized uh, right. products mm. so for that we need uh, still uh, you know a fair amount of understanding on the technology side right. so i would say in the future maybe uh, maybe 20 years down the line mm-hmm. whoever is coming into the industry would come with a basic coding or a basic uh, programming uh, uh, knowledge awareness which which we and all didn't do it because i remember the school days and all when i i i used to have the audacity of saying like i don't want to do any coding because in civil because i was very sure i'm going to be a civil engineer when yeah. i was at 11th 12th itself okay so at that point of time we had that flexibility to say like okay i'm going to be a civil engineer there is no software or anything required for okay, us okay. i don't want to do any c c++ and uh-huh. all uh-huh. so we had that uh, what do you call audacity to say at that point of time now nobody can ignore it because time is changing yeah and uh, as i said i was very clear i'm going to take civil engineer mm-hmm. and that is also because of the fancy image which was there around civil engineering by At that, that point time. of time yeah okay see it, even now if you if you call a kid it's simple even now if you call a kid uh, you say an engineer mm-hmm. the first thing what an engineer do you ask a kid mm-hmm. the kid will say they build buildings okay because i grew up in a village and things like that so everybody like me like many of uh, us would have grown up in a village yeah, yeah. and the engineer word actually refers to someone who comes lays roads do buildings yeah, yeah. Uh, you know construct homes uh, uh, construct the irrigation sewage system for the uh, for the panchayat right. and he used to get lot of respect from the people and also right. at that point of it's a like, hey, engineering is something not just me most of the 90s kids would have the same feeling wow, okay okay so my my interest has started to develop in similar fashion mm-hmm. uh, like many others basically okay. so i was like for to me up to an extent uh, i was so I, i would say sir you are lucky <laughs> in fact i i don't regret uh, i okay. never regretted being a civil engineer okay. i i still date i love it i do it oh, with passion okay. so it's like uh, i never knew like there is multiple engineering division till my uh, 10th or something okay. i never knew okay there are multiple engineering wow. uh, mechanical civil uh, it and mm-hmm. i so many is there i never knew yeah, yeah. to me it was like uh, i also come from a small village only mm-hmm. so it, like engineering means people build buildings that's all is engineering yeah. so i wanted to become an engineer someday sometime okay. and later only i understood there are multiple divisions and then i was also searching which engineer uh, Uh, builds building in that <laughs> so i i just ended okay this is oh, what i okay. i liked it okay that's how i got rooted into it wow and there is also multiple other reasons also so and that's then yeah of course of course okay so i don't uh, regret till date okay. so nice so that's what so okay. as i said you know the digitization process is going to be there now mm-hmm. 20 years down the line people are going to compare uh, the industry okay i don't believe like in a concept of comparing an industry to another industry which yeah. is not a fair comparison no maybe Not the fair either. comparison down the line after 20 years to be where we there be two set of comparisons mm-hmm. one is what we have achieved compared okay. to what, uh, what we are we 10 years before. or 20 years yeah, before yeah, yeah. 
so that comparison would still be there because mm -hmm. that is what is going to push us to the other side like where we wanted to land this industry yeah uh, it 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 for example it goes out in such a way certain process of our uh, construction is now digitized mm -hmm. uh, how we are going to digitize this further mm -hmm. and what are the areas we are going to focus to digitize this okay. so that would be the sort of uh, uh, you know comparison or the things which we'd be talking about uh, in the future and if if we talk about that mm -hmm. that is a constructive comparison okay. that is what the positive or the sustainable comparison i would say right so that is that that discussions only will evolve mm -hmm. the people into the industry and the industry as a whole okay i need to understand how technologies like bim rivet these these technologies will change in future is there any process of evaluation yes yes see uh, absolutely uh, these are all very promising technologies mm -hmm. uh, say for example one uh, uh, small uh, flavor is earlier all the drawings are used to happen on big papers butter papers and things like that yeah. we we all know like how much time it took to trans uh, to get transitioned into autocad uh, formats and things like that yeah. but now right now you go to any builder they use autocad oh. so same thing is happening uh, started to happen for bim uh, quite few years before itself yeah say uh, for example going forward now as i said Uh, earlier i was referring to something you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you the back end process the initialization of you know right from the moment we think a building needs to be built yeah right uh, you know till the contractor is on board mm. this process is automated or digitized mm. the construction is happening mm. now what is going to happen post construction okay so how you are going to manage a built building mm. uh, sitting from your office uh, how you are going to make sure the repair maintenance everything is going to happen mm. uh, seamlessly and how you are going to document all that Uh, for example a bulb is there mm. the bulb's warranty is over or it's going its time is over life okay. is over okay. so you need to change the bulb so right. how we are going to do that when you need when the system has to alert you mm -hmm. all these concepts will collectively come into the picture of bim right not only about construction right. it will also go about uh, you know your maintenance of the building that's where this digital twin concepts also come yeah, yeah. Uh, actually bim is uh, connected with exactly. a lot more softwares exactly. right exactly okay so bim is a module it's not a software mm -hmm. it's a module module so when you say a module it can blend with so many other concepts oh, as well okay. so it's not only about a construction okay so for example in bim if we say mm. uh, people might uh, think like uh, uh, or you know some someone who is new to the in industry might think it is just only about uh, you know class detections or mm. schedule management no mm. you can monitor your cost okay. you can monitor your uh, time you okay. can monitor the class detections in it mm. you can do your uh, facility management also into bim that's mm. what i'm saying about digital twin models and things like yeah, that yeah, yeah. so you can walk through the building and identify which printer needs to be changed over there to explain someone without even going to the building okay so all that is uh, well in place and the systems has already advanced in many countries mm -hmm. they started to adapt also okay. and in india we are yet to you know Uh, do it on a large scale uh -huh. of course there are people who have already started to try it or, or mm -hmm. not but we are ready to adapt as a industry practice which is going to take some time okay. because the adoption rate is always uh, slightly slow in our uh, you know the, our right. our country our exactly. industry basically uh -huh. because we are also dominated by a lot of uh, you know mm. uh, what do you call it? lot of players who are not from construction industry also can do a building there yeah, so it takes time sir. for them to uh, adapt to that's such a technology. huge thing sir actually correct so thank you for this opportunity thank you thank you rajesh as i as i said on a conclusion you know yes of course you are you are addressing the peculiar group of people yeah. and no need to get demotivated and all because you know you. you can see viewers how they are right. reacting for yeah. this and all and we are obviously doing a good thing mm -hmm. and i'm happy to be part of this good thing thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you